tēnā koutou katoa, ko Ibani toku ingoa, ko Maua o te maunga, ko ngā tamara waho te hapu, ko Taranga Moana te moana. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. My name is Ibani Sinclair. I live with a disability called achondroplasia, which is a common type of dwarfism. If I could have one wish, it would be to have an inclusive, understanding world for diversity. I live in Tauranga, born and bred here in Tauranga, Bay of Plenty. Morning, darling. How are you? I have a lovely husband, George. I am 30 years old, just turned 30. Dwarfism is the umbrella word for lots of different types of conditions but achondroplasia is the most common, which is short stature of the bones and the long ligaments, the arms and the legs, and our little stubby fingers. Morning. Morning. How are you today? Yeah, good. Good? Ready for a shower? Yes. Right. When my carer arrives, yeah. I get up, we have a shower, making the bed, then we have Bricky. I live with cerebral palsy. My support person assists me sitting up, and then shower and breakfast, make me a cup of tea. What's going on with the chair, mate? I'm unable to put it into drive. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Ebony is very good at being able to connect with people and relate with people. I need you to help me, mate. I'm a little bit stranded. George and I have always been people that would open up our doors to anybody. And we have two young guys live with us. Bobby and Josh live with cerebral palsy. We are one big family. What makes Ebony special is she's really kind-hearted, outgoing, and always there if you fall off track to um, pick you back up in pieces um, and try and sew you back together. We have a couple of people that, um, that you play, um, that are too hard. I can't do it. Who will make you do it? When Joshy was young, he lost both of his parents, so we've kind of just taken him in, the boy, as our own. She's a rock star, to be honest. One of the best people that I have met in my 22 years of being alive. One in every 25,000 births someone is born with achondroplasia. Able-bodied people can have a child with dwarfism. It just randomly happens. My first impression of Ebony was that she was a bubbly personality and a courageous person. I know I'm a lucky man. George and I met at a leadership seminar. He was a go-getter, and I loved that. That was what attracted me to him. He just loved helping people. You're in. Are you done? Um, I'm done temporarily. They've been able to give me a second-hand controller. Brendan's coming back on Monday. Sounds good. Yep. We go to a specialised gym called Next Step. 
they help people recovering from surgeries, have different disabilities, different needs. On top of having a chondroplasia, I've got spinal stenosis, which is narrowing of the spinal canal. So bending over, I've got a risk of my spinal cord being squished um, in between the vertebrae. So I've had three surgeries. My last surgery it affected me quite a bit. Oh, what? No, now we're going to go around. I have balance issues walking and strength issues. In my surgeries, they've removed bone from inside of my spinal canal. So the chair's been important to me since my third surgery. Straight. Yeah. I can walk without my wheelchair, but it does give me quite a lot of freedom. Just like that. One. I go to the gym to keep maintaining what physique I have. But I wouldn't say I love it, but I enjoy it. Because I know that it's beneficial for me and my body. It's important for all of us. We live a pretty, I would say, awesome life. I'm ready, coach. Uh, your throw technique as well. You can do underarm, overarm. We go to Botcher. Seated. Bobby, you're up first, please. Go, Bob. Play ball. We make decisions together, go on little roadies together. Oh, oh hard luck, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And because their interests are very similar to ours. Okay. 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 We kind of just do things as a family, as a whole group. So today we are cooking quick Asian pork and veggie udon. One most important thing is coming together for dinner. You may as well put the shallots into there as well. It's very important here in our house. How's everyone today been? Yeah, good. Busy? Yeah. It's a time to connect, to hear about each other's day. It's also about just having fun. My day's been great, thanks for asking. How was your day? My day was good. <laughs> it's about having fun, it's about being young, it's about. But also, we come back to knowing. There's lots of love in here too. I've been very fortunate to be born into a family who also have dwarfism. I'm third generation. My nana, my mum and myself have a chondroplasia. And how's George getting on with his studies? Yeah, good. Yeah? He's going to be a counsellor sort of thing, isn't he? Mm, social worker. Social worker, yeah. If I ever need support or information or just a listening ear, they understand because they have lived experience. My eldest sister and brother are six-footers. They grew up like wild animals on the farm, ran like mad and I couldn't keep up. My parents knew nothing. There was no medical knowledge of it. You gotta to recall to our times that there was no disabled people on the streets. I had three children. My middle one is six foot tall. My youngest is Donna. I grew up with a mum who was little, as well as one of my sisters. How's Bobby? What's the other boy's name? Joshua. Joshua. The boys are taking over the house. Mm hmm I believe they're in the bedroom and you're in the garage. It's really good. Heaps of room. Yeah. As long as you're, you're happy with them. Being a little person was normal at home, but I was tormented, I suppose, by the children at school. Alienated, kind of. When I was having a hard time at school, I felt very awkward because people would stare. They'd make me run because I ran differently. 
they would imitate how my body looked to them. Yeah, it was sad and I didn't want to go to school. It wasn't until Ebony was two that I accepted myself being different. And therefore, Ebony grew up having a mum who was comfortable in her own skin. Growing up, I didn't know that I really had a chondroplasia till I was around eight years old. So I would watch my dad, who is of average height, do things, and then I would watch my mum, who's little, and I would see how she would struggle, and I'd say, oh, mum, why is it tricky for you to tie your hair up? Why, why does it look like you're struggling? And then she just said to me that it's because I've got little arms, and I says, you got little arms. Does it mean I have little arms? My mum, she would push me, push me and get me out there. She'd just say, just keep going, just keep going, just keep doing it. You're all good. I'm just a person like everybody else. Where's your cushion you're covering? Um, the one that fills on. I have dreams, I have aspirations, I have goals. I will try as hard as I can, probably twice as hard, but I can do anything I put my mind to. Did you want to take this off, this cover? There was a time in Ebony's life after she finished school where she sort of became an introvert or found comfort in her own bubble, in her own little room. What would you like me to do? Uh, can you cut the fabric? That pink fabric. OK. okay. My lowest point, I would hibernate in my room. Yeah. Edges might need zhuzhing. What does that mean? I would watch YouTube from, like, 3 o'clock in the morning to 3 p.m., and then I would sleep um, most of the day. Because then I felt that I didn't have to face the reality and the real world. Is that all right? Yeah, that's good. I was super worried and probably impatient because I was quite a motivated, positive person. And I've always wanted to try and instill that in her. However, she was struggling with anxiety. I wonder if that's straight. And not quite ready to bounce out of her shell. It'll do. In 2015, when I was 22 years old, I met a lady from CCS Disability Action. She saw things in me that I never saw in myself. She saw that I had potential, potential to do lots of awesome things. She said, you're worth it. And boom, she changed my life. She helped me get a job. And then she said, well, how are you going to get there? You need your license. And then she says to me, you're a real leader and I really would like you to go to a leadership seminar and you're going to go to Wellington. And guess who I met at Wellington? George. He loved music, reggae and hip-hop, like what I liked. He loved food and he loved culture. He loved helping people. And I don't know, we just really clicked. We just really clicked. We kept in contact, then one thing led to another. And I was like, oh, I really like this guy. She's a wonderful person. I started to realise that there was potential to go a little bit further than just a friendship. And I said to him, I think I'm starting to fall for you. She had all the qualities in a person that I wanted. I thought, oh, this guy, you know, he's got more challenges than me, but he's going places, and I want that. This place is important to me, one, because it's my maunga, this is my roots as well. This is where George proposed and asked me to be his wife. I knew that I loved her and that I love her and that she was the perfect one for me to spend the rest of my life with. I hoped, you know, as a lady, you can only hope that it will happen. And when it did happen, I was just like, 
whoa, he actually does want to, you know, be settled and to be with me. No one else, me. <laughs> when she said yes, I felt really, really incredible and it filled something in me. You know, we can conquer anything in our life because two people joined together is better than one person. To know that somebody wants me as a wife is pretty rewarding. I feel quite complete. Her beauty and her heart inspires me to um, be a better version of myself. Having someone that loves me for me um, feels so good and is very important. After I had my last surgery, it kind of limited some of the things that I can do. I have to create activities and make hobbies for myself to keep myself busy. And anyway, I thought I'd have a go at candle making. I have got ordinary candles that are in containers and I've also got body candles, so ones of the figure. I've got different body part candles. I've got the boobies, I've got the bum, I've got the front of males and females. She's beautiful. One of the biggest reasons I started making body figure candles was because I wanted to promote body image acceptance. This one is, this one's very popular, the female more so than the male. For me, it's about embracing your body and expressing your body and loving your body. It shows me that I need to love my body too, even though it's unique and different. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Ebony, how are you? Good. Nice to see you. So I sell my candles through Casita. Mm. I love how unique your breath link is. Yeah. It's an awesome shop. Your lady candles are a real hit. Cute. They are all about giving life skills and opportunities to people with different disabilities, allowing them to have a real role in the community. So dealing with money and products, dealing with customers, and what it really feels like to have an actual job. One of my good friends, Morgan, works in there. She was also my bridesmaid. So I met Ebony at the start of high school. She puts everyone first, and she listens to everyone's point of view, and she makes everyone feel at ease. <laughs> my disability is cerebral palsy. One of the reasons why I first started here is because of Ebony. Just leave them like that, because they look cool. She just gets you for who you are. She just makes it all feel bright. And I appreciate it every single day. It was around uh, 2020. It was after we had come out of lockdown um, in COVID. Ebony saw that there was a lot of people with disabilities feeling very isolated, very shaken, very lonely and her and George felt this urge to bring these people together. In the first lockdown, George and I had each other, but I thought about other people that wouldn't be able to catch up with friends. I put up a post saying um, who would like to come for a coffee. Connect 20 started from Facebook. I named it Connect 20 for 2020. And the logo, I wanted someone in a wheelchair, someone little, and also someone that's waving. You know, they're new and they're coming in and being a part of our Ropu, our group, and also put our whakatoki in there, which is Feria Nga Tangata. Weave the people together. At our first get together, we had 11 people. And our second one, we had 24. And it's only grown from there. Hi. Hi everyone. It's been almost three years since 
we started Connect 20. How do you guys feel about that? We started at 11 people, now we range between 80 to 100. That's pretty impressive. Connect 20 was created for people that live with different disabilities. The Connect 20 community allows people to feel not alone. Our next activity is coming up and we're gonna go to um, Rotorua to have a picnic down there. It's about just doing things as a family, sharing information, sharing relationships. It's one big group, one big Ropu group. 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 73 so far. In terms of the Connect group, she is kind of a little bit like a camp mother. All of the guys that come in, they all gravitate to Ebony. They all want a little bit of Ebony. The thing I love about Connect 20 is um, all my friends around me and we have lunch together, we socialise and we have fun. This is probably the best social thing that's ever happened to me, ever. And I reckon Ebony's doing a wonderful job as a coordinator. It's wonderful. The things I love about Ebony is her heart for people and her determination. Thank you. I am super proud beyond words of Ebony as a person and some of the challenges that um, she has overcome in her life. It's taken quite a while to come to acceptance that I am little. This is me. My shortness is my greatness. All my differences is my greatness.